And welcome back, everybody, to more of Gabriel Knight 2, The Beast Within. So why don't, we, uh, why don't we hit the church real quick, and then we'll go back to the castle, or mansion, or whatever it is. I'm trying to think of what I have actually sung German-wise. I've sung, um, I'm probably going to murder the German uh, language, that is, Die Zuberflute, the, uh, the magic flute by Mozart. Uh, the Oisi Sunto Sirius. Uh, that I've sung. But I haven't really done a lot in German. Alright, so it doesn't really... I was looking to see if, uh, Chick was here. Can I get those flowers yet? I wonder what kind no. of... It was worth a look. Alright, let's head into the castle. Hi, did you have a good time? Uh-huh. Anything <laughs> new? Yes, you had a phone call. Really? A man named Professor Barkley. He said you had his number. I do. Thanks. <laughs> so now they're all good now. Great. Now that I know that you're not trying to uh, steal the boyfriend away, that's not the boyfriend. That is the boyfriend. Uh, it's all good now. Let's head into the library, where I think it's the only phone in the place. Let's take a seat, and let's call Un Professeur. Who should I call? Oh, God. Right, I need a business card. This was it, I think. Yeah. Long distance charges may apply. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi, Professor Barkley. It's Grace. Oh, good. Uh, I have a name for you. It's Herr Josef Dahlmeier. And uh, he specializes in Bavarian history. And uh, I think he's somewhere near you are. Herr Josef Dahlmeier. Great, got a number? Yeah, I do. It's uh, 4982-555-2234. Thanks a lot. Sorry about the bother. Uh, that's no bother. Uh, when are you coming back to school, Gracie? When I figure it out, I'll let you know. Well, be good. <laughs> There's a deeper story going there, too, I bet, huh? Maybe I'm just a, uh... Where is... <laughs> um... So how do I call this guy? Who should I call? The the dude... Oh, here it is. Sorry. I missed that. First item. Duh. Da. Hello? Hello? Sind Sie Herr Josef Dahlmeier? Yeah. You must be Grace Nakamura, the American history student. Yes. I hear you're interested in Ludwig II. Very. <laughs> Good. There's something I want to show you. Drive to Berg and Starnberger See. Meet me at the Memorial Chapel. All right. Thank you. Oh, wait. Uh, was there anything you wanted me to look into before we meet? Well, I was hoping you knew something about someone called the Black Wolf. He was a contemporary of Ludwig's. He lived in Prussia, I think, and he was well-connected. Uh, never heard of him, but I'll check. See you there. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> She's so bizarre. I love Grace. Oh, man. I think I'm gonna have to play Gabriel Knight 3 now. <laughs> There's 
There's just something so magical about some of these stories. Thank you, good old games. And the best part of good old games, completely DRM-free, which is a very, very nice, uh, you know, relief compared to the At typical business At least I business have models. the car keys now. Oh, right. I forgot. You can't just drive. You need to key car. Alright, this is where we're going. Stoundberg LC. Uh, I'm gonna get attacked by wolves, aren't I? Oh, hello. It's a memorial chapel. It's a memorial chap- Oh. Okay. This is where he died. You must be Grace. Yeah, Dalmeyer. Hello. Yosef. I didn't mean to startle you. I wanted you to see it. David Hasselhoff? I see him here the most, you know. More than at the castle. So, what did you want to know? Everything. We had a lot to review with you, buddy. Oh, okay. yeah, here we do. Professor Barclay says your hobby is Ludwig. Yes. He was the last real king that Bavaria had. As a Bavarian and a history buff, well, that's enough to hook me right there. But there's more, right? He was a romantic, you know. A dreamer. And he was misunderstood, maligned. And... Sounds like you can relate. Me? Hell, I have it easy. At least I live in the 1990s. And not every eye in the country is on me. But... Yes, I can relate. <laughs> the hell was that? <laughs> you know about Ludwig's diary, right? Of course. How can I get my hands on it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I have been trying myself for five years. They keep it locked up tight in the Royal Archives and they don't let it out. They must think it contains things that will hurt his image. They won't let anyone see it? Not ever? Only one person outside of the government ever got to see it, a biographer, Sir Richmond Chapel. He had friends among the German royals, and they let him look at it. Did you ever try to contact Chapel, pick his brain? No. And I don't believe I never thought of that. Are you, really? If you do and you find out anything, you must share. <laughs> it's a promise. <laughs> this guy's an idiot! That, that alone right there should be your, your red flag warning sign. There's only one person that's ever gotten a chance to look at it. Did you talk to him? No, I never thought of that. Oh, God. So th this is your life. This is your passion. It's like... Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. Sure. Sure. Tell me about Ludwig. What's it to tell? I don't know where to start. There's so much. Politically, the most significant thing about Ludwig II was that he signed over independent Bavarian statehood to Prussia in 1870. Bavaria became a part of United Germany, and Ludwig became a figurehead prince under the Prussian Kaiser. Why do you think he did that? Bavaria has been involved in the Hundred Years' War. People were tired of fighting. Prussia's push to unite the German states made some amount of sense. There's still, Ludwig must have had other options. At the very least, he should have negotiated better terms. So what was the real reason? He was manipulated by Bismarck. At least that's what I think anyway. What about Ludwig personally? You'll find two perspectives on Ludwig. 
the view the tourists get is the romantic ideal, Ludwig the tormented loner. Then there is the historian's point of view. Ludwig was plagued with guilt over his sexual orientation and was driven mad with self-loathing. But I take it you're not buying either point of view. <laughs> well, it's all too convenient, isn't it? That he was a devout Catholic, there is no question, and I'm sure there were pressures on him to be normal. But he was no prude. He loved Byron. Mm. Yes. Philosophy, the French court. If anything, Ludwig was too much an egomaniac. He didn't give a damn what anyone thought. And besides, he didn't try to hide any of his relationships. If he suffered from anything in his romantic life, it was disillusionment. No one loved him back as purely as he himself loved. Okay. Well, if it wasn't sexual guilt that tormented him, what was it? I don't know. His diary was filled with self-guilt, but I'm sure it's not about that. If I knew, I'd write my own book, set the record straight, so to speak. Have you read anything about Ludwig's midnight sleigh rides? Oh, would that have been something? To be out at night and suddenly see him sweep by with his entourage? They say the night agitated Ludwig and that being outdoors and the rushing feeling of the sleigh calmed him down. Sometimes even the sleigh wasn't enough. He would stop in some remote woods, order his servants to stay put, and go wandering off by himself for hours. He drove the servants crazy. Tell me about Bismarck. Oh, Bismarck. He was the Prussian Kaiser's Chancellor. Not a nice man. Bismarck had a reputation for learning people's weaknesses and manipulating them. It's a matter of record that he had spies on Ludwig's staff. He may even have had a henchman even closer to the king. And he was involved in the conspiracy to declare Ludwig insane. I see. Did you find out anything about the Black Wolf? I did. I'd read about him before, but I hadn't realized that was who you were talking about. His name was Godin, Paul Godin. I found a reference to his being called the Black Wolf after you telephoned. I've never heard of him. Who was he? Godin lived on the fringes of the Prussian court. He was handsome, charming, dangerous, or so they say. He was variously rumored to have been a foreign prince, a Prussian spy, even an assassin. Since you were interested in him, I found out some things that are probably true. It said he came from abroad in the mid-1800s, but claimed high German blood. Do you know where he came from? No. And he was ruthlessly ambitious. He probably found out who held the power, Bismarck, and offered his services. Bismarck was a good judge of talent of that sort, anyway. What else do you know about Godin? He must have done something remarkable. Bismarck was not a generous man. He liked to string people along with promises, but rarely came through. He did for Godin, though. He gave him a royal title and lands in 1863. And that was the last reference I found to him. Well, how could he just disappear? Uh, it's not that unusual. Back then, when you were given a title, you usually changed your name and moved to a place where no one knew your past, so you could act with impunity or uh, be a pompous ass and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any way to find out what Godin was called after he got his title? Is it that critical? It might be. Well, if you could send away for a copy of the entitlement deed, assuming it has destroyed during one of the wars, Godin's new name would be on it. But you would need a research permit from the government to access those records, and they can be very hard to get. A lot of red tape. Great. Could you get me one? What do you know about Ludwig's hunting accident? A couple of years ago, I was introduced to this great old man, a real old world farmer. Well, his grandfather was Richard Horning, Ludwig's equestrian. Oh, he told some great Ludwig stories. Sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> ah. Anyway, he said that after the hunting accident, Ludwig got terribly ill, that he had a fever and was acting crazy. 
They were afraid that the wolf had been carrying a disease or that the bite had gone septic. A wolf bit him? Yes, yeah, it's not so unusual. There were a lot of wolves in the Alps back then. The servants were really worried, but Ludwig recovered, physically anyway. Horning's grandfather said it was the fever that broke Ludwig's mind, that he was worse than ever after that. What do you mean Ludwig got worse after the accident? Ludwig always had been a very private person. But after the accident, he got darker, more crazy. Towards the end, he was even forcing his servants to enter his chambers bent over so they couldn't see his face. Horning's grandfather said his temper was fearsome. He would fly into a rage at the least mistake. He must have been terrified of Yes, him. well. Horning's grandfather felt sorry for Ludwig, and Ludwig hated his own violence. He was always giving gifts to his servants to apologize. You mentioned that there were other reasons why Ludwig's servants feared him. Ah, that's another of Horning's mysteries. There's a story about Neuschwanstein. Apparently, there was a period of time of two or three months when Wagner would come and visit him. Wagner? There. Yeah. Yeah. The two would lock themselves in the singer's hall. Horning's grandfather said the sounds that came from there were awful. Well, the servants had superstitious minds anyway. Some of them quit over it, just walked away. What kind of sounds? Horning's grandfather called them heartbreaking and ungodly. Maybe it was Wagner trying to sing. <laughs> Well, I guess that's all for now. Thanks for your help. It's my pleasure. And if you ever want to talk again, mm -hmm. just give me a call. I'll meet you down. I will. Thanks. Servus. Well, bye. Okay. Well. This is where they found Ludwig's body. Are you really going to make me... Let's go back to our different museums and see if our people have anything to say to us. I don't have anything to... Grace okay. Nakamura. Yeah, we know who you are. Thank you, though. I don't have anything to say to her at the moment. Damn. Look like I might have, you know? I don't think there's anything I missed in here, is there? No, it doesn't look like it. I went through them. Went through this stuff. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, Alright. Let's, um... Let's go back to Rittersburg then. I don't. I'm kind of out of obvious clues. Do you have anything new to say? Hi, Gerda. I'm back. Good. Good. Uh, bitch. Is there anything I talk to you about? Gerda? Yes? <laughs> Have you heard from Gabriel at all? No, Grace, I'm sorry. Never mind. <laughs> She's so weird. I love it. Gerda, do you have any idea where I could get a government research permit? I don't have time for a lot of red tape. You should ask Herr Übergrau. He can maybe get such things very fast. You think? I was going to write Gabriel today anyway. Hmm. Who the hell is Hooper Crow? Was that the... Was that the mayor dude? I think that was the mayor dude. Only because I can't think of anyone else who it could be. You know, it's a lot easier when it's the Smiths. Those are names I can, like, recognize and remember. Hooper Crow? 
Ding ding. Yes. Guess they're closed. Alright, that's not Uber Crow. Who the hell was Uber Crow? It's not this dude, right? I mean, I know he was Uber. I don't have anything to say to Herr Huber at the moment. Who the frick is Uber Crow? Uh. Well, I guess we can figure that out in the next episode. So, as always, folks, thank you very much for watching. Tune in the next episode of Gabriel Knight 2, The Beast Within. Thanks for watching, folks.